Hi there, it's Jeff, and welcome to those that are new to my channel and those that subscribe. Well, I'm back again in another video doing shaker doors, but this time I've changed the design a little bit and I've introduced a little bit of a bevel edge on the inside here of the door, which just adds that little bit of extra detail and lift to the door. So keep watching and I'll show you how easy it is to achieve this look for your next project. Okay, so the first thing uh, we're just going to go through is um, your, your door. This is going to simulate um, my door. So this could be uh, the scenario where you've got this door off your cupboard. This is the size that you've got and you've got to work with. So this is going to be in our scenario as well. So it's just uh, for this demonstration, I'm just going to be using a bit of 16mm uh, MDF. Um, don't worry too much about the thickness of your doors. Um, for this at this stage because uh, I have covered that in another video of making shaker doors if you did have to um, remake all your doors you could use a thinner piece of uh, substrate or MDF uh, say around about 12 mil and then use 6 mil for your strips bring it down to about 18 mil but today with this video I'm going to be using 16 plus the 6 mil strips going to be around about 22 millimeters because I'm not worried about the thickness but moving on uh, the first thing you will need to do is cut yourself up some strips of MDF. Now I'm using six millimeter or a quarter of an inch MDF, uh, round about 75 millimeters, something around that. It's, it's really up to your taste. Uh, there's no set uh, requirement there, but if you are gonna make new doors, just keep in mind, uh, you wanna make this wide enough so when you do flip the door around especially if you're using thinner material that when you do your cup hole hinges for your concealed yeah, hinge holes that uh, it's not going to come through your, your face of your door so 75 mil will definitely cover that now in my previous videos if you have seen i've just done um i've just left these strips like that nice and square 90 degrees on the edges here we've put them onto the door like so all around and this is the beauty of this um, concept of, of making your own shaker doors it's very easy anyone can give this a go without any complicated machining uh, or miters or anything like that but this particular uh, style that I'm going to show you today this other alternative will involve a little bit more machining um, and that's where this comes into play so this is another strip here I've just done uh, on the saw and what we're going to do is bevel that edge on the uh, table saw I've chosen here to do around about 30 degree uh, miter or, or angle just so when that comes together all around as you can see it just gives it a little bit more of a feature so that going there like that roughly um, and the, again I'm going to make sure roughly here I'm around about 70 millimeters or 70, 70 to 75 millimeters just so it looks aesthetically nice as you can see some shaker doors that I've done previously behind me uh, just going to be keeping up uh, in that sort of theme with the same sort of dimensions so let's get over to the saw I'm going to run these strips uh, through the saw with a 30 degree uh, bevel on them and then I'll show you the next step from there Okay, now that we've cut uh, all our strips and I've got uh, these strips, they're all cut oversized as well, so we can trim them later on. Now we need, we've got the two side uh, styles. Now we're gonna do the ends here. And what we're gonna do now is do that same bevel, but we're going to do it on the reverse side like that. So when we do put this together, you'll just have a fine line which will just look like, give you that effect of the shaker door. So I'm going to make these a little bit oversized, these sides as well, 
Um, you can sort of line them up flush to get your sort of accurate measurement, but what you can do also is just have them creeping over just a little bit, maybe half a mil each side, and then uh, make your end here to suit and get it nice and snug. We'll staple it down, and if, if these sides and the ends are creeping over your door a little bit, you can easily trim them with a flush, uh, a flush trim bit. So to keep them all nice and uh, flush and end when you go to paint your door, so come nice and tidy. So our next step is back onto the saw. I'm going to reverse this, cut the underside with this same bevel, mark the other side, and then we'll test it for fit before we glue. Okay, I've just cut one side now and you just get everything into position. Like I said, uh, you can probably give these just a little bit of a, uh, just creep them over the edge a little bit so they've got maybe half a mil overhanging, just to give yourself a little bit of leeway. And then I'm going to mark this as best as I can, but I'm going to make it a little bit oversized. And then we can go back to the saw and just do fine, fine um, cuts till we get it perfect. One thing I just wanted to add is I've just done some real fine micro adjustments to that end there. And what I have done is just clamped on and just made myself a little stop block. So when I do my next one, it, it'll, it'll be equal to this one, the same size. So just keep that in note. Uh, so those can be parallel and your drawer will come nice and square. Okay, I've just done a little bit of a dry test fit, make sure it all is going to line up nicely and, not, and neat. And that's how it's going to sit together there, I've just got all my components. And then what I'm going to do is I've, done, I've clamped a straight edge along here, so it just gives the board a nice um, flat edge along the one side to start with. So I can move things out. I'm going to move this one off and put some PVA glue and then I'm going to staple them on. Okay. Okay, remembering I'm just going to center that because I've left it a little bit oversized. I can Make sure it's tucked up against the stop and just give it a couple of pins. Okay. 
and then work our way around from one side to the other. Well, there you go, the finished door already. I've just given it a little bit of a sand, especially over the little nail pinholes and uh, all the joints, they are nice and clean and straight. It's ready for a nice coat of paint. 
to be put onto your cupboard doors. And I just really like to show you that there was an extra way of doing this, especially with this bevel, it's something different, adds a little bit of uh, finesse. Um, some people might like it, some people might not, but I just want to show it out there that there is another method of, another style of doing these shaker doors with that bevel edge. And by the way, with this leading edge, that bevel, I've done mine at 30 degrees on the saw. I did experiment and try um, 45 degrees as well, but I just found it was a little bit too aggressive, that, that, um, that bevel. So I found 30 degrees, I stuck with that. It was just a nice sweet spot, but you could experiment yourself with that, do it a little bit less or greater, depending on your taste. But um, I'm really happy with the way they turned out. The best part about these um, doors and this method of making these shaker doors is that you can do these yourself in your garage at home without the need for the guy down the road with the CNC machine. Yes, they're going to come uh, yeah, all machined out, nice and ready to go. But I mean, you can give these a go and do them yourself just using some basic MDF. Again, if you had plain doors in your cupboard and you wanted to make them look like shaker doors, well, then you're just going to buy the strips and put them on in the same method that I made these doors and you've got a different looking door, you know, so I hope this inspired some people out there to make your own doors. This one here on the other side here was one that I made in a previous video. If you haven't seen that, uh, click on the link above. But this is just using the same method, but the strips are just square cut instead of the bevel. And uh, yeah, same method. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you got something out of it. Um, if you did, press like, share with your friends, don't forget to subscribe so you can keep up to date with all the latest videos and tips and tricks that I come out with. And hopefully, I will see you in one of my next videos.